year, Delhi McKinnon has been barred from fishing in Canadian waters. However, that has not stopped him. He took his amazing fish catching ability to southern waters. Paul Withers reports on a Nova Scotian original. Big this is a very unusual catch for a Cape Sable Island longliner. It's a grouper. They aren't found in the North Atlantic. This one has been caught off Trinidad near the coast of South America. What's a boat from Nova Scotia doing in the Caribbean? The adventure of the whole thing. It was an adventure. And if you love a free spirit, you're, uh, that kind of makes you tick a little. And uh, for economic reasons. In fact, Deli McKinnon had little choice. He had lost his fishing license for the year, revoked for Deli's habit of repeatedly overfishing. His boat, the Jenny and Doug, was tied up in Cape Sable Island and costing a fortune. To have that boat tied up is costing me fifty thousand a month. So Deli McKinnon left Cape Sable Island with a crew and backing from money men in Halifax to go fishing off Trinidad. The novelty of it would be exciting if you didn't know what was going to come up on the hook next. All we had was a book that told us about the different species in the region. No one had ever commercially fished hook and line in the Caribbean before. That didn't stop Deli McKinnon. He did what he does back home. He caught fish more than had ever been caught in the Caribbean. The catches were, for that species, were practically unheard of. There were many strange things on the trip. A water spout, some kind of ocean creature found in a shark's belly. But stranger still was that Deli McKinnon, Canada's all-time quota-busting fisherman, was helping out the Trinidad government. Helping the government set up their own fish conservation quota system. I don't find it unusual that, that any state especially one that was starting a fisheries, a brand new fisheries, would look, to, uh, would look to a layman, a fisherman, for advice. About the same time that Deli McKinnon was finding his big boatloads of fish, he also found out that they do business in Trinidad a little bit different than they do back here in Canada. If you wanted to run a business streamlined, you had to grease palms. Plain and simple was that. You see it all the time in the movies, well, we lived it. More than that, the people in Trinidad could not handle Deli McKinnon's huge catches, could not find a way to get the fish to market. Uh, things didn't, didn't go as we planned, but we didn't think they would anyway, but more cropped up and jumped out at us than we even anticipated. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So despite his world record hauls, Deli McKinnon barely managed to break even. It was the first time in his long career that he didn't make money fishing. You, see, you know, I, I feel not as if I failed. Basically what I'm doing is falling back and licking my wounds and preparing for another day. The day he's waiting for is the day the Canadian government lets this crafty rascal of the fishery back on home waters. He'll get the word sometime this month. Oh, <laughs> that, that is, how can you put excitement into words? I mean, I enjoy what I'm doing. And it's, it hadn't been for this Trinidad thing, it would have been a very long year, but that broke up the year, and I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I could say I'm a little kid waiting for Christmas, just like a little kid waiting for Christmas. Paul Withers, CBC News, Newelton, Cape Sable Island.